Hello, I'm Charles Baldwin, Department Supervisor for Smith Services, a part of the Temkin Power System. Today I'm going to talk a little about DC coils. In this video we will cover highlights of our general capabilities and manufacturing processes. Please note this is not intended to be used as a step-to-step -step guide to DC coil manufacturing. I'm standing inside our DC coil manufacturing department. Our team includes coil miners and experts in the insulation process that make up over a hundred years of combined experience. They are backed by our team of engineers that work together to determine the most optimal winding system for our customers. We've been manufacturing DC coils for over 35 years, and during that time, we have made coils for anything from small fractional motors up to 10,000 horsepower. I'm standing behind a table that is full of different types of coils that we manufacture. All the coils to my left are examples of field coils that were layer wound on our automatic coil machine. The coils at the top right are holding contactor coils. And below them is an example of a clutch brake coil. Not shown here, but also available are dry type transformer and large synchronous coils magnets and shaker coils, all made in our shop. To help cut down lead time for our customers, Smith Services has the capabilities of machining terminal blocks for virtually any applications. These combined capabilities and our expertise allow us to keep these processes in-house, thereby helping to reduce our customers' lead time and cost. All right, what we got here is a fr fr actually our first step in winding our uh, revolving field coil. We're putting the crossover patch in right now to begin our winding of the next layer, which is very critical to keep our coil from shorting turn to turn. As you can see, we're putting the layers on now, the turns on, and as we're doing this, we're keeping our turns close together. That reduces the size of our coil so it will fit in the application that we need. Also, in winding our coils, the data that we collect off of the coils is stored in our machine for future references. If we would get this coil back in 10 years from now, we would always need to punch our recipe in or our data to retrieve that. We could order the wire ahead of time and we'd be ready to wind the coil in case of an emergency for our customer. At this time, we'll step to the next step over here to showing the insulation process of our coils. The next process on winding on our revolving field is putting the ground wall insulation in the coil. It sometimes is wound in the coil. Other times we put it in after the coil is made. Then we use a glass tape, a 7,000, five to 7,000 glass tape as an armor. When we insulate our coil with that, we also have to put our insulating blocks in the bottom right here. We tape that in on the second layer, which you can see over here. We use this and you cannot see it in here because it is taped into our coil for a reason. So, so that no foreign material can get into our coil, whether it be carbon dust or any, any other kind of foreign dust that may occur in the factory wherever the coil is going to. Then we, insert felt like this. We push it down on the inside of our coil like that. The next step of this process will be go to the VPI process. Then after the VPI process is done, this is what the coil will look like as a finished product. You can see the felt is hard here. It will not come off the pole piece no matter how you try to, to get it off. The only way you could get this pole piece separated from this coil would be by going to a char oven. At this process, this is a finished coil getting ready to go to the next department, the assembly department, where they will install the coil on the spider, then it will be installed in the motor. For any additional information about Smith Services, you can visit us at smithservices.com.